Yeehaw. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a cowboy hat, look what time of year it is, and you have your answer. Yes, I did go as a cowboy for Halloween. That wasn't my plan. Don't make fun of me. Also, if you see these two videos behind me, uh, I just needed something to play on my monitors while I was recording. So that's Retro Game Corpse, and that's IGN. Wanted to give credit before I started the video. I was gonna put on Linus Tech Tips, but ever since they had their controversy, I haven't really been able to look at their channel the same. So that's why I went with these two. A little over a year ago, give or take about a month, I got my Steam Deck. It was my first PC type handheld. Not the first I ordered, but the first to arrive. As about a month before I even reserved my Steam Deck, I reserved an Ein Loki Max. I mean, I pre-ordered it. You could reserve it, but I pre-ordered it. Guess which one arrived first. I got this thing because I got major FOMO seeing everybody else have it, and I was like, why not? I wasn't sure I was gonna like the Loki Max just because that runs Windows, this runs a, for, a version of Linux, like Steam OS. So getting the Steam Deck, which has a nicer built-in UI, felt like a safe bet for someone trying to get into Windows gaming, such as myself, I mean, PC gaming. I truly thought this would be my gateway to PC gaming. I bought so many PC games on Steam in preparation for this thing arriving, but I think I was wrong. This thing isn't bad by any means. It's a truly great device, but it hasn't been the PC gaming device that I wanted it to be. And it's kind of disappointed me a little bit. We'll get into that in a little bit. But if I say anything at any point throughout this video that you disagree with, let me know in the comments down below why I'm wrong. So this thing is pretty unique specs. This isn't a review, so I'm gonna be pretty brief, but it runs Linux with a SteamOS layer over it that makes the gaming experience way better. This is available through the updated big picture mode on Windows. I have used it on my Loki Max a few times, but it's more fleshed out and smooth on the Steam Deck. It's also not as special because if you're running it on Windows, that's just the default thing they're gonna give you. Like big picture mode used to be kind of ugly. This is now good but they're obviously gonna make it better for their device just because they want you to get their device over just using their launcher. They probably just wanna improve the experience on their device. But that hasn't stopped me from having some weird slowdowns, bugs, or glitches in the UI on the Steam Deck. While playing games, I have encountered the UI being slow, and what I mean by that is I will be playing a PC game or an emulator or an emulator and the UI if I press the steam button will take a few seconds to show up and it's like not horrible but it's definitely noticeable because I sit there and I wait for the UI to show up and I've gotten to a point where this thing where I know like where everything is so even if the UI doesn't show up it still registers like the button presses and whatever so I can go down like to the exit game button without the option even being there but it is annoying i thought that this was just an issue with me because i was pushing this thing to its limits i guess with emulation but it also happens to me while playing pc games like ghost of tsushima which is really annoying it's not like a deal breaker or anything it's just really annoying and i wish i had a smoother experience i don't know why this is but i can never just have a smooth experience on a device i buy like everyone touts Smooth UI, smooth experiences on every device. Steam Deck, smooth UI. iPhone, smooth home screen, smooth everything. Everything works, but it doesn't work for me. I don't know what's wrong with me. It just doesn't work half the time. So it's possible I'm just cursed, but I'm gonna point it out anyways. For all intents and purposes, the Steam Deck is a great portable game console as an alternative to the Nintendo Switch, even if the target demographics of the Switch and Steam Deck are completely different, and the people who buy the Steam Deck and Nintendo Switch probably have little overlap. It's a pretty powerful portable PC. It can run almost any Steam game you throw at it. It's obviously not gonna be able to play everything if a game publisher or developer hasn't optimized the game, or it's just super powerful and needs the highest end specs, it's not gonna run well, but a lot of games will. And being able to play Almost any game you throw at it is a big plus, especially at its cheap price point compared to the competition. At the time of this device's release, the main people making portable PC type handouts were Chinese companies. I and Neo, One X Player, The Works. Those people were making them at exorbitant prices. I probably used that word wrong. Don't correct me. 
you're gonna embarrass me. And it was exciting seeing a mainstream company dip their toes into the portable PC market, especially since I and Neo, One X Player, all those companies selling them way too damn much, too expensive. So it's nice to see Valve come in and take a loss so you can get a good portable PC gaming handle for $400. And we've since seen companies like Ein come in and kind of do a cheap one. And I mean like Lenovo, I don't know how much the Legion Go is, but the ROG Ally, the ROG Ally is a, it's pretty, pretty cheap. I mean, it's not as cheap as the Steam Deck, but it's more powerful than the Steam Deck. So you gotta give and take when you can. So yeah, it was exciting, but I don't think this thing has been the magical device many people thought it would be. For me, at least. I probably did this to myself. There are reasons that pertain to the Steam Deck, but I feel like my interest in emulation and performance kind of hurt this experience for me. And it makes me sad. What I mean by that is that from announcement to launch, then to me eventually getting it, the content I consumed about the Steam Deck consistently talked about it running emulators and how it would be an emulation powerhouse. And don't get me wrong, it is, but I went into it wanting incredible emulation performance with PC gaming as an afterthought or like a kind of in the back seat, which was a dumb decision on my part, but it was also like my interest kind of working against me. I did want to start playing PC games. And so one of the reasons I love the Ein Loki Max at least is because I can play PC games on there and have a great time while also playing emulators. But the difference is that on the Steam Deck, I feel like because of my channel and how I kind of positioned the Steam Deck from the beginning on my channel, I kind of ruined this for myself. Because I've become someone who's slightly obsessed with frame rate, at least in the sense that I can tell when a game is not running at its full speed or the graphics look ugly, I'm not really able to look past how this thing performs with a lot of games. Now, before you all come for me, I do acknowledge that this is probably just a stupid thing to think on my part. Like, yeah, it's not super powerful, but it's also not as expensive as the devices that it's being compared to right now, like the ROG Ally. It's like, what, $200 cheaper than this thing at its base price? Oh, well, this is $200 cheaper than the ROG Ally. And playing AAA games at 30 to 40 FPS while also dipping below 30 at times is not ideal, I'm not sure I can really be expecting that from this thing. This thing starts at $400 for 64 gigabytes of internal storage. And the only way you can increase the price is if you go for more storage. It goes between 64, 256, and 512 gigabytes, which suggests that they took a heavy loss on this thing. So I can't really ask for too much more unless I want a substantial price increase. And the previously mentioned ROG Ally, oh, how do I say ROG? And the previously mentioned ROG Ally now exists for people who want more power, but that comes with the downside of having to use Windows. And I've complained about that. I've talked about that in my Ein Loki Max and Zero reviews. The Steam Deck has a leg up in that developers are more likely to make their games compatible for this thing because of its specific hardware and how it's specific to Valve, more people are gonna buy it since it's not just a generic Windows handheld. They're more likely to go out and make a version specific for this or optimize it for this, for the Steam Deck compared to like a company going and making a version specific for the ROG Ally. That's not gonna happen. But that optimization only works to a point. You can optimize your games all you want, but if the performance I get out of this thing is what I get out of the Loki Max at default settings, the only thing going for this is the price. Cause UI is UI, but if games perform better, there's a clear winner. Wait, I don't wanna be complaining this whole time. So let's go over a few positive things about this thing that I really like. Most obviously it's cheap for a PC handheld. $400 for 64 gigabytes of storage it's not a lot of storage you're gonna need more than that you're either gonna want to upgrade the storage yourself like i did or buy an sd card like i also did i can sit here and complain about performance all i want but for 400 dollars, this is a very good device to get i love the price point and it's a big reason why i got one of these in the first place because 64 gigabytes at 400 dollars is really good a 400 gigabyte sd card on amazon was cheaper than going for the 256 models. So I just got one of those and got it before I got my Steam Deck. And being able to upgrade it on my own, which I eventually did, was a big plus. It is $100 more than a Switch, 
but I feel like if the what you want to compare this to is do you want to spend 405 it's like 400 500 600 dollars on a Steam Deck or do you want to spend upwards of $1,500 making a really good gaming PC? I think I made that point really wrong in the video, so I'm going to insert it here. Ignore the hat. What I meant is that the Steam Deck is not something you should compare to the Nintendo Switch because they're kind of two different things operating for two different markets. Whereas you should probably compare it to something like a gaming PC, which you're going to spend upwards of $1,500 on. So it's like... A Steam Deck versus a gaming PC, not a Steam Deck versus the Switch. That's going to be a big pull for a lot of people. you know. And what else is going to be a big pull is the UI. I've complained about it, but there are a lot of things that we need to compliment about it. I've heard enough people sing its praises for me to realize that the UI issues are probably just the curse I have. Or like something I did to it because I keep pushing it to its limits and the Steam Deck probably just can't handle it so much. But even with all the issues I've had, it's still a really good UI. But this is a good UI for newcomers. The Steam Store is built right into it so you can go and buy whatever if you want to, which is really great for someone who probably, like if you don't have a PC and you just have a Steam Deck, being able to access the marketplace right from the home screen is great. You can buy a game, wait for it to download and launch it without having to do like pretty much anything aside from navigate the store and press buy. You don't have to deal with Windows or Linux or anything like that. You just have to buy a game. It's awesome. This is probably the best hand PC type handheld I've used in terms of UI. Granted, I've only used three, technically two, if you count the Loki Max and Zero as the same device because they both use Windows and they're both Ein products. They're just different versions, but this is still better than just using Windows. But having the biggest PC storefront make a competent launcher is a big plus and I really like it. But having the biggest PC game storefront make a launcher is a big deal and makes the deck all that much better. Breaking the fourth wall a little bit, if you've watched this far into the video, I'd assume you'd like my other content. So why not subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell, select all, so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. I will hopefully have my Ein Odin 2 arriving in the mail sometime soon. They moved the release date up from December to like end of the month, which is crazy. I, I hope it ships soon but I mean, the last update they did, uh, it didn't look like mine was so close, but we'll see. And while you're down there subscribing, why not like the video? Leave a comment. If you already heard something you disagreed with, tell me why I'm wrong. This is definitely me just begging you to interact, but I mean, hey, it works sometimes. I'm not sure I ever really talked about this on any of my videos about the Steam Deck, which is weird because I made like seven but I do like the controls on this thing. The main controls are all lined up on the top so you don't have to bend your fingers to like use the D-pad or the right stick, which is really useful. All of them being laid out like this is really comfortable to use, especially you got big hands like me. You can just go like this, use this, use the stick, use the A, B, X, Y buttons. It all feels very comfortable, especially with the grips on the back. I just realized I didn't put these buttons in the script because I've never used them. It might look weird since both the analog sticks are in the middle, it kind of reminds me of the Wii U gamepad, just because that had both the analog sticks on the top, and so does this. But it works out really well. The hardware on the Loki Max is more impressive to me, just because I do like the D-pad on there better. The D-pad on there is bigger. I also like the travel distance on the joysticks on there be better. I'm not sure if I like the face buttons. They might just be less round, which I honestly prefer. So I do like the hardware on there better, but the hardware on here is very good. Perfectly serviceable, if I do say so myself. I wanna to quickly touch on these uh, buttons on the back. I never use them. The only thing I actually use them for is for hotkeys in emulation. Like if I'm playing CMU or a Wii, like a Wii U game, using one of these as a swap screen button has been really useful. Same thing for 3DS. I don't do that very often though. And also, what kind of power user do you have to be to use these buttons? Like, I, I guess I just don't play the right kind of games for these to really matter to me, but like, what do you use them for? Someone in the comments down below, tell me what you use these buttons for. I'm actually genuinely curious because I know there are very good use cases. They wouldn't be on here if they weren't, if there weren't, but I just don't know. 
aside from emulation. I know the touchpads are a little controversial and, and divisive among Steam Deck, Steam Deck owners, as a lot of people seem to not think they're necessary and other people seem to really love them. And I like them. I'm not, I'm not in love with them. I, I use the oh, low-key Max that doesn't have them more often, but I, I like them. I think they're useful. I mean, they're not useful in every game, but a lot. Uh, some games use them in a really useful way, and others, they just exist. So by default, the left trackpad is set to act as a D-pad, and the right trackpad is set to act as the right joystick, which I think is great. I don't use the left trackpad all that often, just because it acts like a D-pad in most games that I play, and I already have a D-pad right here, so I don't need that. But there are a lot of games where I'll be like, you shoot a gun or something like that. Using the right stick, it isn't always super accurate because this thing doesn't have a lot of travel distance, so it hits the edges pretty quickly. Using the right stick, you get a lot more movement, a lot more space to move around, and it's a lot more accurate. It's really nice. I like it. And sometimes I just like using the trackpad instead of the D-pad because of how much bigger it is. Once again, it never really happens with the left trackpad, but the right trackpad, like I said before, the bigger space I have to rub my finger around instead of just quickly hitting the hardware is really annoying. I don't know why they didn't give it more travel distance. Like, dude, this is such a big ridge for it to hit. Why couldn't you have just made it a little smaller? Some games utilize them in fun ways, but most of the time I'm just using them as default, which is fine. I mean, a lot of them work like that, but if they're not necessary for a lot of games, why are they even here? There are plugins that let you use them in certain ways for certain games. Like if you have, I don't know, like a shooter or something like that, you can have a plugin that lets you use the left trackpad, like a weapon wheel, I think. There's probably something like that, but I haven't dabbled in any of those, so I can't really comment on them. Something I can comment on though, is their usefulness in desktop mode because they are very useful. I don't know if I'm in the minority or anything, but I hate using the joysticks to control like a mouse. I have to do it on the low key and on the low key, it is so annoying just because it moves kind of slowly, except if you're on a keyboard. So it throws me off. But on the Steam Deck, we get to use trackpads, which is really great. Especially on the Steam Deck, I hate using the joysticks to traverse the Linux desktop because they, like I said, for the low key, the cursor moves slowly and it's just like a bad experience. I don't like it. They work and I've done it before. I just don't like it. These trackpads are a godsend when it comes to desktop mode, just because they make it so much easier to move around, right click on stuff. It's awesome. I don't know if that really justifies them in terms of them being on the device and making the device more expensive, but them being there, I'm gonna like them for desktop mode. It just, it just makes it overall better. Like, it, they're not always useful, but when they are useful, they're really useful. They, I don't, I can't think of a time where they've taken away from the experience. The only thing they've done is made the device bigger. In terms of emulation, this thing can play pretty much anything you want it to. And using EmuDeck, you can put all of your ROMs on your Steam homepage as if they're just normal Steam games, box art and all, which is really cool. EmuDeck is really good for organizing your ROMs. Why don't? EmuDeck is really good for the organization of your ROMs and it's also really easy to set up. I'm not going to go into it here, but just know that it requires going into the desktop mode, which I know might be annoying for a lot of people. But like I said earlier, trackpads make it really easy. Just got to make sure you're connected to the internet and know how to use Google. That's really all I have to say about emulation because all of these super powerful devices can play pretty much anything, which makes them not fun to talk about in terms of emulation at least because we already know what it's going to play what it's able to play which is why i think my loki zero review did much better than my loki max review or like my videos on loki zero just because that's something we don't really know much about like it's loki max it's a powerful pc it can play nintendo switch games you're kidding but the loki zero it's like what the heck is a loki zero what can it do so I feel like that was more interesting. And I mean, you showed me that because my Loki Zero review has like, I think twice the amount of views as my Loki Max review, at least the double. Lower end devices are just much more interesting to test out and push to their limits than higher end devices. Because we don't know what a lower end device is gonna be able to play like 90% of the time. Because like the other 10% of the time, it's a T618 chipset. 
maybe not even 10%, maybe like 50. But it's much more fun to test out a lower end device and try and push it to its limits. Whereas on a more powerful device, you just put a ROM on there and it works. Like that's, that's no fun. You don't have to worry about trying to change the video backend for an emulator. That's no fun. I like putting in hours of work to get Tears of the Kingdom to run at 15 FPS. I'm kidding, but like, you get what I mean. It's more fun to talk about emulation when it's harder to set up or get running. So like, even though I complain all the time about the T6 agent chipsets, and I will continue about to complain about it if I get any more devices with that in it, it's, it's kind of fun to talk about because every time I like try a different game and I like put it, put it in there, see if it's gonna work, test it to its limits, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we have something to complain about. I love complaining. So to wrap this all up, I really like the Steam Deck and I would recommend it to anyone looking to get into PC gaming. You don't even have to care about emulation at all to want one of these things because while Valve has been sneakily supporting emulation on the deck through accidentally putting a screenshot of a Steam Deck with Yuzu on the home screen. They made this for their Steam games. So they support emulation like as much as the company can, but they want you to buy their games. Give them, give, they want, they want money. What are you talking about? Do you think, do you think Valve doesn't want money? So yeah, if you have any interest in taking your PC games on the go and don't want to deal with Windows, this is a great option. There are no PC handles running Linux right now. Like default out of the box Steam OS, right? Like Linux Steam OS? I don't think so. Like you can boot into Linux on the Loki Max and Loki Zero, but that's for like emulation. The only reason I'd recommend the alternatives is if you want more power. I know emulation, it's like, if you really want to emulate Switch, just get a Nintendo Switch. It's a hundred dollars cheaper. But like, if you want to play higher end PC games or like games that only work on Windows, you're going to want to go for the ROG Ally or the Loki Max as those play Windows games and you don't have to deal with workarounds. You don't have to deal with games like running poorly. Well, you will, but the powerful hardware will kind of make up for some of the issues that will arise if you try to play that game on the Steam Deck. But that's something for you to decide, not me. If you want a Loki Max, they have it at like 685 on their website right now or something like six, 600 something dollars. I'm pretty sure that's like, it comes with the same amount of storage as the most expensive Steam Deck. So I'm pretty sure those are pretty similar in terms of their price points. But what do you guys think about the Steam Deck? Do you like it? Do you already have one? Do you have one on the way? Are you thinking about getting one and now you just want validation from me? If you're not into emulation, don't come to me for Steam Deck advice because I want it specifically for emulation. Wanted it for emulation and now I'm kind of getting hit in the face with the reality that it's more so for PC gaming than emulation. Are you thinking of getting a Windows alternative or is the Steam Deck's UI enough to draw you in? Have you watched this video all the way through and now you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next week. Hopefully. I know I said I'm going to be uploading near the weekends now, but this is filmed on a Sunday, so it's probably going to come out closer to Wednesday. Sorry. Goodbye.